guys and I got some new coffee the other day I thought we'd give it a go yeah that is good I went into Starbucks to order a latte and the guy there said if I buy a bag of beans I get my drink free so a nice bag of beans for one pound fifty not too bad not too bad. I've got some stuff to do today which is why I'm in the studio I actually have a keyboard review to shoot and let me just show you this thing real quick this right here is a Cherry MX keyboard. It's super heavy. This is what I'm going to be reviewing next, and it's got the coolest keycaps I've ever seen. They're called Ninja Printing, which is where the character is printed on the front rather than the top. Very cool effect. So, the first thing we're going to do today is we're going to shoot a ton of cool B-roll of that. Let's get started. Obviously, I have to set up the light. Come on! Alright, so, got the light set up. Need to set the keyboard up now though, I need to find some interesting angles. Obviously I'm gonna need this camera to shoot the b-roll, so I'm actually gonna set my iPhone up. Clue for later on, also probably the title. And you can see how I shoot keyboards. Alright, three, two, one. So there we go, B-roll shot. I had my phone on these DS games when I was filming. So I was about to get into the main section of this video. Then I noticed something. So I actually came this way last night to shoot part of the keyboard review and there was a wedding going on and it turns out they've still left the marquee up. I really dislike vlogging in direct sunlight, it's just, so difficult to get your exposure right because I usually vlog in aperture mode. It's just it's just not easy. There it is. There's the marquee. We were trying to capture this like ambient room tone next to this reservoir, and all you could hear in the background was just and here we are, the usual spot. Is this a good angle to do the main talking head section? I don't think it is. Can definitely tell that summer's coming to an end. However, that's not necessarily a bad thing for me because autumn. Definitely my favorite season. I always love the colors in autumn and it's much cheaper to travel Which means I usually take you guys on a pretty fun trip. Not sure if I'm doing that this year Hopefully I haven't booked anything yet though. I might have to take a look into that Anyway, let's get into the main portion of this video while I'm walking home Why did I a lifetime Android user switch to an iPhone before I even get into this? I just want to say don't get me wrong I absolutely love Android as far as customization goes value for money freedom of apps Android is better than iOS in absolutely every way but there are some things that iOS just does better than Android so me goes back at home then I will explain why all right so I thought we'd take this one from the shed if you live anywhere it's always important to have a really good shed set up I mean what's the point in having a shed if you don't have stuff in it look we got some Got some petrol over there, we gotta sort of, this is taking too long. All right, so the first thing I wanna say is I've been an Android user forever. Like, my first phone was a Sony Xperia something, I don't exactly remember what it was called. I got that phone when I was 12 years old and that was really my first introduction to smartphones. Now, that phone was probably about as thick as this tape measure, so you do need stuff in your shed. It wasn't particularly fast, certainly not by today's standards, but at the time it was actually, it was pretty good. After that, I had an HTC One something. That was probably one of my favorite Android phones I ever had. Seriously, that thing was amazing. In fact, I took this photo with it back in 2014 and then only recently I actually did like a photo repair where I turned it to this. I love Lightroom. Seriously, I love Lightroom. In 2016, I bought myself a budget Android phone, the Qbot Note S. That was fantastic until it randomly died when I was charging. Fun fact, the first video I ever edited on a Mac was basically me trashing that phone. And I don't mean like saying, oh, it sucks. I mean, literally I threw it out my window. 
I accidentally deleted that video before I uploaded it though. Such a shame. And after that, I had the Moto G3, what many consider to be the best budget Android phone you could have bought. And my final Android phone I actually had was the Samsung Galaxy S8. Now, I'm going to be talking about my experience with that phone shortly. So, those are all my Android phones I had. Now, I am going to be talking about the S8 in more detail later on because there are some things that I want to talk about with that phone. But before that, I actually had one more smart device, and that was the ever classic iPod Touch fourth generation. I don't have that anymore, unfortunately. I don't even have it like broken to take videos of it but that was my real first introduction into a smart device and at one point I actually did have an iPhone this was the iPhone 5 the original one and that actually had the battery problem where it would just completely die randomly and it did eventually get broken but while I had that phone it was one of my favorite phones I'd ever had now back to the S8 how was my user experience with that my last Android phone I ever had well for the first three or four months I had it it was a brilliant phone no denying that it was a really good phone after about four months, the user experience kind of sucked. It didn't help that it was also super fragile and both the front and the back ended up cracking on the S8. The camera wasn't all that good, face detection was slow, the fingerprint sensor didn't work all that well, and after a while the OS just got so slow, I thought, why not pick up an iPhone, see if I like it or not, and then use it if I do. And I'm pleased to say, I very much liked it. So this is the iPhone 7. I've made several videos on this thing. It's really good. I love it. So why did I buy this and not a better Android phone? Well, the honest truth is I kind of got bored of Android. I've been using it for so long. I just wanted to try a different phone experience and considering I've only ever had one other iPhone, I just wanted to try it. Especially as I use an iPad as well as a Mac for my primary editing device, an iPhone just sort of made sense, especially with great features such as iMessage and AirDrop. I just wanted to give the whole ecosystem a try. So, lifetime Android user switches to iPhone. What do I like? What do I not like? And what would I like to see in a future iPhone? So the first thing I really like about iOS is simply the OS. If you've seen some of my videos before, I am a complete sucker for minimalism. I really like a clean design and iOS sort of fits that for me. I know that with Android, Android, you can get some crazy customization, but you can get probably a cleaner look. But honestly, I found that they're not exactly all that stable. To have such a clean and stable OS as standard is a really nice thing. Because again, that was one of my main complaints with the S8. I personally really like stability in my tech, whether that be computers, tablets, or phones. I like them to be a stable software experience. I know that hardware is important, but if your software doesn't back that up, then your experience just won't be as premium as it should be. The second thing I love about my switch to iPhone is is the camera app. This is kind of weird because this is the single camera iPhone 7. It's not exactly a Titan considering some Android cameras have like five. Do you remember when I reviewed that Nokia a while back and that had like five cameras and shot raw photo? The photos that you could get with that thing were absolutely amazing. But because I have this big professional camera, I don't need that in my phone. If you do have a phone solely as a camera, then it would make sense to look into something with a better camera. But honestly, I'm totally fine with the one and the UI for the camera is absolutely excellent. This is by far my favorite camera UI that I've ever used. It's nice and simple, easy to use. It's not too cluttered and honestly, I haven't touched a point and shoot in the time that I've had this phone. I've just seen the time and I actually have a reservation at a restaurant, so let's go. That was good, that was very quick. Anyway. <laughs> Back to why I switched to this. The final thing I'm gonna talk about in this video is the fingerprint sensor. Now this thing works pretty much perfectly. As I said in the Samsung, the fingerprint sensor didn't work all that well. On this, the fingerprint sensor works great. Now we're gonna talk about some things that I don't like about the iPhone. Starting off with the lack of customization. Now on Android, you have the option to customize pretty much everything you want. You also have a lot more choice when it comes to your phone. So you can choose what hardware you want. Say you want a fast phone for gaming. You can get a phone with a lot of RAM or a fast processor. Or say you're a phone photographer. As I said, there was that Nokia with five cameras. With iPhones, it's pretty much what you see is what you get. Now for my use case, that's honestly fine. I don't tend to customize my phone that much. As I said, I take photos on this camera. All of my music is stored on the cloud and I don't really play that many games. So I don't really need all that much power. Another thing I don't like is the hardware limitations. Now, as you may be able to see, I have cracked my phone. I actually cracked it with a screen protector on. Now that was down to a dodgy screen protector, but still, if I were to replace this screen myself, the fingerprint sensor would stop working. And I really don't like that. With the S8, the fingerprint sensor's on the back, so if I were to replace this screen, I could still use this fingerprint sensor. Okay, so seeing as I am a lifetime Android user, would I consider switching back after trying iOS? And the simple answer to that is 
yeah. Maybe in the future, if an Android phone comes out that I really like, I would consider switching back. But for now, honestly, I don't really have that much regret in switching. Now, obviously, as I've been saying throughout this video, all of this is personal preference. You may have your own reasons as to why you chose Android or iPhone, but as of now, for me, the iPhone works. Okay, so to end this video, we're actually gonna be answering some of your questions. So I put out a YouTube community post earlier, and I'm just gonna read through the comments now. So the first question is, how tall are you? Okay, so something I've noticed is tech YouTubers are generally pretty tall. I think MKBHD is like six foot two. I'm pretty sure Peter McKinnon's also six foot two, but I mean, the last time I was professionally measured, I think I was like five foot seven. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not that tall. The second question is, do I have any plans to do a gaming stream once in a while on the channel? If so, please do PUBG. I've never personally played PUBG. Also, I don't really have any plans to do gaming live streams on this channel. I would like to do more live streams. I might do some gaming live streams on Twitch, probably Pokemon if I were to do one, but for the channel, honestly, probably not. Third question, which is the best gimbal you've ever used? That is an easy one, because I've only ever used one gimbal. This is the Feutech AK2000. I did a review a while back up there. And when doing tasks that require a gimbal, the Feutech AK2000 works really well. However, I really don't use it that much. I think that's probably because a lot of my shots are very close up. And doing that with a gimbal is very difficult. If I'm doing handheld, I honestly just prefer to shoot 120p. Otherwise, I'm using a slider or a fluid head. Next question is, how old are you? I just turned 19 this June. I actually had a vlog planned. I think I lost all the footage or didn't get enough. I don't remember. The next question, I've forgotten how many we're on now. How long does it take me to edit a video? This is a good question. These are all really good questions. Depending on length, a typical vlog like this generally takes around five hours, but a tech review usually takes around two days. And I mean two full days. My tech reviews honestly take forever to edit whether I'm using Premiere or Final Cut. Tech reviews are definitely a long haul edit. When did I start YouTube? I started YouTube seriously last year. Do you prefer, <laughs> do you prefer Apple or Android? I don't really prefer either of them, but at the moment I'm using Apple. Okay, I'm actually recording this the next day. I went to go edit this video, but then I got a really good question. And that question was, what's one thing I dislike about the GH5? That is an easy Easy question, Ibis. I honestly really don't like Ibis. I know everybody else makes a massive fuss about it not being in certain cameras, but I would honestly prefer for cameras not to have Ibis because the build quality is drastically improved. I've had cameras with Ibis in the past. I have the Sony a6500, I have this GH5, and one thing I've noticed is that the Ibis is always the weakest link. Remember when my Sony broke for like months? Yeah, the sensor got dislodged because of the Ibis. This camera I have to send into service because the Ibis is squeaking which is why I'm gonna be rushing videos over the next few days. It's gonna be fun. And the second part of the question is, what camera do I recommend for filmmaking at $700? Easy, Canon 80D. Nowadays, and especially with the release of the 90D, you can get a Canon 80D for about $700. It doesn't shoot 4K, it doesn't shoot 120 FPS, but the 1080p that it shoots is very good. Autofocus is excellent, handling's excellent, build quality is excellent. And when you put those, and I can't say this enough, excellent 1080p files into a 4K timeline, the difference will be negligible. And the final question is, when do I plan to do a giveaway for the iPhone 10 or any other iPhone? I, I honestly don't know. I'm, at the moment, not for a while, certainly. I'd love to give away an iPhone, but at the moment, I just don't have the resources. If we hit 100,000 subscribers next year, I will give away a brand new iPhone. All right, so with that, guess I should probably end the video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Remember to like the video if you want to see more content like this and smash that subscribe button. I'm done for now and I will see you guys in the next one.